It is called, say it with me now, Project 2025, and it has become a point of central discussion in this presidential election year. It's because this playbook um, was designed for Trump, um, came out of sort of Trump world, um, but it also is because it outlines policies that voters, as a general matter, really, really, really don't want. So this was created for Trump by people associated with Trump. Trump, now realizing how unpopular it is, he keeps trying to distance himself from it, saying he has no idea who these people are who wrote this thing. Unfortunately for him, here he is on a private plane with the guy who's in charge of it. Uh, <laughs> his running mate, J.D. Vance, is also pals with the Project 2025 guy. He just wrote a foreword for his new book. Um, then there's this over at the AP a few days ago, former Trump administration official teasing the fact that he is currently writing the super secret transition playbook that Trump will use if he's reelected in November. This guy planning the transition. You will notice the headline offers a helpful reminder that this isn't the first playbook he's written. The guy planning the Trump transition is a, quote, Project 2025 architect. Six of Trump's cabinet officials collaborated on the drafting of the Project 2025 playbook. Another 140 Trump administration staffers had a hand in working on it in some capacity. All of that put together makes it a hard sell for the Trump campaign to claim that they had no idea who these people are who wrote up this thing. And, and that was before this happened. ProPublica has now obtained and published 14 hours of training videos put together by Project 2025. They're essentially tutorials for members of the future Trump administration. And the videos are interesting to look at in their own right. But for the Trump campaign, uh, trying to say that no Trump people have ever had anything to do with this, have never heard of any of, things, any of these people, they don't even know where this thing came from. For the Trump campaign trying to make that case, these new videos are not going to help them make that case. Hello, my name is Jeff Small. I was a presidential appointee in the Trump administration. My name is Caroline Levitt, and I am a former political appointee in the Donald J. Trump administration. I served in the Trump administration. Pam, you started on day one of the Trump administration, and you stayed until the final hour. Yeah. Shocking that I made it. Oh, poor Pam. They must have really put her through the ringer. Um, of the 36 different people who appear in these videos that are obtained by ProPublica, 29 of the 36 of them are people who directly <laughs> worked for the Trump administration or the Trump campaign. We have uh, fresh new polling today from UMass Amherst painting a very clear portrait of why the Trump campaign continues to try to pretend like they have no ties to Project 2025, no matter how unsustainable that claim is. Uh, part of the findings of this poll are that even people who voted for Trump in 2020, they, by clear majority, say they do not support the policies in Project 2025. Uh, the same poll also took a snapshot of the electorate since Biden dropped out of the presidential race. Back when this poll was taken in January, Trump led Biden nationally by four points. With Kamala Harris now at the top of the ticket, though, she leads Trump nationally by three points. So a total turnaround there. And you're starting to see that same turnaround for Democrats in, this, in important swing states, too. Late last month, after Biden dropped out, Harris was tied with Trump in swing states, uh, the swing states of Michigan and Pennsylvania. Trump was up by one point in Wisconsin. If you look at that same poll now, in all three of those states, Harris leads Trump plus four. It's a turnaround. It really is. And it's nationally and it's in the important states. And, and what this means, if you're the Republican ticket, is you're going to need a new strategy. You're either going to need to turn this campaign around to make people like you more, or you're going to need to figure out a way to win in a different way. And I have been talking here on MSNBC with some urgency about this since around the time of the RNC, um, because of what I'm seeing as what clearly appears to be an emerging strategy for Republicans this year, which is to mess with the count of the vote to have local Republican officials deny certification of the vote county by county. You'll remember in 2020, when the violent mob was sicked on Congress, they were there to block the certification of the vote nationwide. Well, this time around, they are professionalizing the effort to block the certification of the vote. They're systematizing it. They're starting with trained Republican officials at the local level in states all across the country so they can make a bigger swing at it this time. 
And I have been talking a lot about this on MSNBC. I, I hear from you guys a lot every time I do it. I've had a lot of feedback on this. Um, but some real experts in this field are talking about it, too, not just about how worrying this problem is for November, but also what can be done to stop it. Uh, there's an urgent new report on the subject that I have been talking about for weeks here. Uh, we're revealing it here for the first time tonight. It's from Crew. Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. It's called Election Certification Under Threat, a legal roadmap to protect the 2024 election, including from 35 officials who have refused to certify results. The report tracks this sort of burgeoning crisis across eight different states so far, where, in fact, there have been dozens of Republican local officials who have been refusing to sign off on proper tallies of lawful votes. Is this a Republican strategy that holds any promise of essentially hamstringing the electoral count, of, of, of messing up the election and it's the, the, the administration of the election at the point of the counting of the votes, making official the vote tallies? Do they have any real prospects of messing up the vote in November using these tactics that they have been essentially test driving in states all across the country in lower profile elections. Joining us now is Noah Bookbinder. He's president and CEO of Crew Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. Mr. Bookbinder, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks uh, for the advanced look at your report. I found it really interesting. Thanks so much for having, to me, for having me. So I have been talking about this sort of with increasing concern for the last few weeks because it looks to me like Republicans at the county level um, and now starting to be at the state level are test driving an effort that they're going to try in November to effectively prevent the election from being made official, to prevent the vote tallying to go forward in any sort of normal way. Do you think that is what they're trying to do? I think it is absolutely a thing that is going to happen. I think that, that we've seen these county officials in multiple states uh, attempt to stop the certification of uh, uh, of uh, votes in elections of, of, in many cases, very little consequence. And they were doing it essentially as a run through for an election of, of a great deal of consequences, which is the one this fall. Um, so I think there's almost no question that this is going to happen. Um, and it seems to be uh, happening in a way this year that is more systematic than it has in the past. Um, so that's deeply, deeply concerning. I think the good news is that it's clearly illegal in all of these states, and there are steps that can be taken uh, to effectively halt it in all of these states. And you single out some of those in a way that I think is very succinct and helpful. You write about um, state election boards, secretaries of state, attorneys general, local prosecutors should, in advance of the election, explicitly tell county officials that they do not have discretion to refuse to certify the election, warn them in advance that they may be treading into essentially criminal law territory if they do this. We've seen that happen in a couple of states already. That's right. In Michigan, uh, the secretary of state and other officials have been very clear that, uh, you know, the law provides for legitimate ways to challenge elections if there are questions about fraud or questions about the count. Um, county certification is not one of those ways. It is, it, it is essentially a ministerial process. It's not a way to challenge results. And in Michigan, officials have told these county officials, you can't do this. And if you do, there will be consequences. And I think that that both uh, potentially could deter some of these people from trying this. Um, and it also puts them on notice so that uh, if they do try to disrupt the election uh, and they are prosecuted or they are challenged civilly, they won't be able to say they didn't realize they couldn't do this. Uh, so that's something mm -hmm. that we'd like to see in all of these states. And again, we've seen it happen in Michigan, but we haven't necessarily seen that happen even in every state where it has already been tried, let alone in states where, uh, lo where officials don't yet know if Republicans are going to try it. it. It does seem like there are sort of different tactics legally available to state officials in various states. You can, in some cases, you can have a court um, essentially order public officials to do this. In some states, you can have the state election board take over the job of a county election official if they're refusing to do their job. In other places, you can have a local official removed. But there isn't the same playbook available legally um, 
in every state. It does seem like the one thing that every state could do right now um, is give advice to every elections board in the state, get it on record to every elections board in the state um, that they should not do this and they'll be and, and it's not within their rights to try it. That's absolutely right. I mean, there we've seen uh, in different states a number of these different responses work. We've seen in New Mexico and Nevada where they've gone to court and gotten orders to, um, to uh, ordering these county officials to certify the vote, and that's worked. Um, but the reason why we're putting this report out is to say, here's the law in this state. Here's what can be done um, so that state officials can get out there and warn these folks and be ready to, to act. And in a lot of states, I think the signs have been positive. In a state like Georgia, uh, it's very alarming because you have the state election board going in just the opposite direction. And even though the law is very clear, you have the state election board actually trying to say that county uh, officials can uh, refuse to certify. And, and that's definitely a place to really keep an eye on.